to see you again, Mrs. Thomas. How are Hi. you? It's a pleasure to meet you, you, by the way. Um, I'm a big nerd about movies, as I, I mentioned to you in LA. You use no green screen whatsoever on the film, right? <laughs> yeah, we didn't use any green screen. We wanted the actors to be able to sit there in the cockpits of the spaceship and really feel a simulator ride. So they're in a simulator role on a set and see what they would be seeing out of the windows and feel the ship reacting to things. It was uh, a lot more fun to shoot it that way. Can I ask you how you projected the images on the windows? How did that look like? Were, you, were, they, were they outside of the ship going onto the window? How did they, how did they do that? Well, we did it with a, with a complicated process of front projection that hasn't been used before. Um, it's a little bit complicated to describe right here, but okay. basically we would align the projector for every shot so that we could get a, a very bright image of, of the celestial bodies you know, outside the window and line it up for the shot. Right. Now, with Memento, it's one of my favorite movies of all time. I'm wondering how has filmmaking changed since you made that movie 13 years ago and now? Like, could, how different would you make Memento today, let's say with the knowledge you have as a filmmaker now? Well, I mean, in technical terms, we make the films exactly the same way we did back then. Though. We didn't use IMAX cameras on that, but we used 35 mil anamorphic and you know, neg cut the thing and printed it, and that's exactly how we made this film. So, uh, no, we're still doing it the same way we always have. All right, now with the dust, I know it was like biodegradable dust. You were actually shoving it in the actors' faces. Talk about that. And how did was there any danger involved in the it flying in their eyes? How did you keep it from getting in their eyes and hurting their eyes? Well, they had goggles on most of the time. So. Uh, no, it's it's uh, very safe stuff. It's it's a biodegradable compound, and uh, you know you have to you have to be a little bit careful about you know getting in your eyes and so forth. But really, what we did is we used very large fans, Ritter fans, they call them, and sprayed it up into the air, so it was a real cloud of, of stuff. And then what I said to the actors is react accordingly. Close your eyes, you know, cover your mouth, whatever you would really be doing. Right. Now, Emma, I have to ask you one question before I go, because I think you're one of the most incredible producers in the business. And I want to ask you, being a producer in a film like this, do you get to give Chris ideas? Like, do you can you go in there and say, I think this shot looks like, can you do that at all? Um, yeah, well, it, Chris is a very collaborative director, and I certainly get to voice opinions. I would never say you can't do that because ultimately he's Chris Nolan and you know he has a vision for what the movie should be but he does listen to you know between me and the you know the, the, the sort of people around us that we've worked with for a long time there's a very honest sort of exchange of uh, opinions about what what various things should be and, and I think I feel like he listens. I just want to thank you both for making me excited to go to the movies again. I saw it again last night here in 70 millimeter, and it blew my mind. I'm going again Sunday for a third right. time. So thank you for making movies that make us believe and being different and original. And so I just want to say it's an honor to meet you both. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful thank weekend. You. Thank you. Good to thank see you me. again as well. How are you? Doing all right. Congratulations to the film. I saw it again last night. It's mind blowing, obviously. Thank you. I want to ask you when you have an emotional sequence in a film and you're like, you know, you're crying or yelling, whatever you're doing in a movie, and the camera turns off, can you go back to being your happy self? Because I know you're like a happy, nerdy, awesome person. Can you go back to that immediately? No, I can't. I mean, I, do, I don't, I'm not like method. Like I'm, I don't ask people to call me by my character's name because that really freaks me out when it gets that intense. <laughs> people do that? Someone did that to me once on a set. I was in a, a seat, I was in the debt. And I was in an emotional scene and we were taking a break and someone came over to me to do like a touch up and they called me by my character's name. And I was like, oh, please don't. Like, I know they were doing it to try to help me, but I thought, oh, it just made me super self-conscious. Yeah, yeah I, I don't like that at all. But um, listen, if you're doing a scene and you're crying and you're really, it's not like just like fake crying, like you are feeling it, you're there. Of course, when they yell cut, you're going to still be there. Um, and like, I take a second to go, okay, just let me get my breath again, like, you know, get back to normal. Um, so when I do something that's a long shoot, I always have to remind myself to take time to find myself again. Now, I've always wanted to know this, when you have a younger person playing you in a movie, do you have any say at all who gets to be cast as your younger self? Do you, like, do you go through pictures? Is that any, your job at all? No, not really, because to be honest, if I would have cast someone to play me younger, I wouldn't, I would have <laughs> cast someone who's more awkward looking, and, and you know, Mackenzie Foy is so beautiful and, and perfect, she's perfect for the role. You look just alike, I mean, honestly. But that's not what it looked like when I was a kid. No? I was a very awkward, I was a very awkward kid, so. Give me some details, braces, like what was going on? Short red hair, <laughs> freckles everywhere, red cowboy boots, like just the, not the kid that, that was like the pretty girl. Um, it took me a while to find me you know, get comfortable in my skin and yeah. um, and get out of that face, but um, <laughs> you look amazing. Oh, no, well, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, no, I 
I'm glad I don't participate in that. But I was happy to get to do preparation with Mackenzie. Yeah. Uh, so before we started shooting, we talked about the character, we talked about mannerisms that we would have, how we w would wear our hair, even how we'd stick the pencil in our hair from like underneath yeah. up that way. Little tiny things like that that you wouldn't think are important that become important because they thread the character. Right. Now, I know you're a bit separated from some, a lot of the space stuff in the movie. I don't want to give too much away. But do you, for me, I would have been on set every day watching Nolan shoot this space stuff. Did you get to go on set and just like be there when they were shooting that kind of stuff and like going to go on the ships and stuff like that? I could have if I wanted to, I, I'm sure, but I didn't because the character is so isolated. Oh. So I thought to create this isolation, I needed to kind of stay away yeah. and not feel like I was part of the group. Um, so that was probably the, the most difficult part for me was the loneliness of playing the character because now hanging out with everyone, they're so cool <laughs> and I'm having such a good time. And I hope we all work together again where I'm, where we're, where I'm playing a character that is part of um, the team um, to hang out with them. You're absolutely phenomenal. I think you're the heart of the film. So oh, congratulations to you. you. It's wonderful to meet you again. And thanks. congratulations on all your work. You you're wonderful what you do. I love talking with you. I love thank talking you to you too. So I'll see you soon, okay? okay. Mr. Hey. McConaughey, how you doing, buddy? Doing well. Good to I see you again, man. All right, now. Uh, well, first of all, I want to ask you this, because I, I, on True Detective, you had an eight-episode arc. Yeah. Here, you have a two-hour and 50-minute movie. Yeah. Do you like having that massive arc of a character that you can do? I mean, you have one here, obviously, but yeah. do you like having the TV show versus the movie arc? I don't, you know, I don't even think about it really as an arc. It's just kind of, you know, what you, what you got in True Detective is it's front-loaded more, meaning there's three episodes of let's meet the man before there's a major conflict. Right. Um, you know, most scripts, it's around page 30. And you don't, and, and, and usually also when they're gonna edit films today, most of the time, I'm not saying with Interstellar, but most films, if they're gonna cut something, they're gonna cut that act one, because they wanna get to, yeah. where's the conflict? Let's get on with trying to solve it in the action. So, you know, I'm not saying I prefer the TV. There's a long, form, character driven, long formats, yeah. great. But if I can, I, I found it in this, yeah. I found it in Interstellar. And last time I saw you, we were talking about Colt McCoy starting for the Redskins. Robert yeah. Griffin III started this this past yeah. time. He did a great job. Any any thoughts on his start? What, what are you thinking about this season? Do you think he's going to continue going good? Robert? Yeah. Well, I hope so. I hope he's fully back from 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 uh, the injury because you know I think he's the the long term answer. So I wouldn't want to be hasty, which I'm sure they're not. If he's back, I'm sure, I'm sure I would believe they're not being hasty. Um, you know, we'll see. The guy's got the ability, and the, you know, I just. Look forward to seeing the Redskins getting a bit of a bit of a flow, getting a bit of a flow. The whole team is getting a bit of a flow. Now, look, injuries are part of football. That happens not only to the Redskins but everybody. But let's let's I'd like to see us getting a little bit of a flow. Yeah, me too. Last question for you. I think one of the greatest shots in the history of television and movies was that tracking shot in True Detective when you were walking through the Seven house. Minutes, yeah. How did you do that? How many takes was that? I mean, was that that's unbelievable? Yeah. Well, I think we did about seven takes, oh. and each take I think was about seven minutes, and I remember. Everyone, so you, yeah, they had choreographed it from the beginning. Before we ever started shooting, that scene, Carrie had that up on a board. So they started working out the logistics and the choreography of that long before we shot it. And then on the night, we knew we couldn't do it all night long because also there's so many things going on. I think we went for take eight and some squibs went off in the wrong place. And all of a sudden we're like, you know what? Everyone's so tired. There's so much going on. Someone's going to get hurt. And, but we had it in an earlier take, so it's awesome. Mr. McConaughey, thank you so much, man. Congratulations on the film, by the way. How are you? Hi. Hey, hey, good to see you again. Nice How have to you see been? you. How have you been? Um, this good? is a total nerdy question. I'm sure you remember. All right. There's a line in the movie where you say love is the one thing that transcends time and space. Yes. In the trailer, that's the way it's said. In the movie, it's longer. Did you did you record it differently for the movie and the trailer? No, I didn't. Okay. I was just wondering. That's a totally nerdy <laughs> question. I was just wondering that when I saw, I saw it again last night. So I was just curious. No, they cut a very clever trailer, um, especially the sound edit with it. The first time I saw it, yeah. um, I was even thrown. And then when I saw the film, like, oh, good. That, that's that's how I remember that's it. That's the line you said originally. Yeah. Now talk about when you walk on. Because uh, I know this is practical effects and. When you, what are you actually seeing in the windows? I know he projected images of space, so there was no green screen used. What are you seeing? How does it look? How is he projecting it? How does it look? You just described it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> You're seeing just what you described. You're seeing images of space, literally what you see in the film. Um, maybe not the shots that linger on things like black holes and wormholes and things. And uh, but when we're there's a shot, you know what I'm talking about, where we're talking about orbiting Gargantua, yeah. and that the camera pans across a window, and outside the window you see space with um, Gargantua in the distance. Right. That is what we saw that day. Nothing was added or changed to that shot, as far as I know. So that's just for, uh, one example. 
Now, I know you've been asked about this a lot, about the hypothermia thing. I'm not going to get into that whole, the whole, I know you've, you know, you've been, all the, all the press has been asking about that, but where's the balance of being an actress and not putting yourself in so much danger, but also trying to be as realistic to the character as possible, especially in that situation where you kind of could get, could have got hurt, but you didn't, obviously. I don't know if the balance is there. I think you just, you, you don't do any permanent damage. You know, that's the best thing you can do. Your health is important, but to be honest, I've never been good at playing it cautiously yeah. uh, when it comes to the physical challenges involved in Pretty Full On in that way, so I might not be the best person to ask.